welcome back. It is I, your friendly neighborhood, they, she. My name is Victoria. Yes, this is paint on my fingers. That's fine. Welcome to every single book I read in 2022. Ah, so I'm going to take you through my reading journal. I'm going to show you the books. We are talking books today. Books today. I love books. I love books. I love books. You love books. I love books. This is my traveler's notebook. It is majestic. I have had it for many years. I have a little hand from a necklace my friend got me because I love hands. And a little star from another necklace. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, our monthly insert is going to take us through every month of 2022 in January. What a good reading month. One, two, three, four, five, six books. We started off with The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It was a specific issue. I have the first volume. That's the only one that I own. Because although I adore comic books, I also like free things. And Hoopla, who I love, is where I read all of my comic books. I read all of my comic books on Hoopla. You just put in da -da -da -da, your library card number and then you can read it. Not sponsored, but like, sponsor me. <laughs> so I read it, the newest volume on Hoopla. And you know what? It was Cuckoo Banana Pants. Now, I loved the first, I loved this, I read this first, and then, like, a year later, the show came out, and I loved the first season, and then it just got weird, and then I could not deal. I just stopped watching it, but I was like, let me continue, let me continue. Let's see what Victoria of the January Times said about this book. I gave it two stars. The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Volume 9. So this is just the first five. So I'm on Volume 9. We have stayed committed. Well, not Volume 9. I'm guessing it's like Issue 9. I read it January 1st digitally from Hoopla. I love Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and how dark it is as compared to the Sabrina that I grew up with. Having seen the remake, I know the writers can do weird this volume fell flat and served more as a recap than anything else. That's also true. There was a really long gap between this volume and like the show and then all the other volumes. It's like they took a long time off, like a couple years. I mean, don't quote me on that. But like between the first volume and the TV show. So it just kind of, it was like more summary than anything else. And then it got super weird. Porque the dad... Mm, the dad like came back and I think he got into like somebody's body and then he was hitting on his kid No, that made me so uncomfortable. I'm like there was also assault. Hello. No, so uncomfortable So uncomfortable Anyways, that's the first book. That's how we started off the year right with a bang Do you guys know that song? Rama lama bang bang flashback big bang 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 That's what it's reminding me of anyways Next in January, Given Sugar, Given Salt, and The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating, which I, it was in my favorite books of the year. Salt by Jane Hirschfield. Jane Hirschfield actually has a new poetry collection. Well, it's like new and selected, or like new and collected. Uh, it's coming out in 2023. I am going to do a video about all the books that I'm really excited about for 2023. Some that I just like already pre-ordered like months ago and then some that I just found out so look forward to that but Jane Hirschfield is on this list. This is my first Jane Hirschfield. I do own quite a bit of Jane Hirschfield but this is the only one that I read. Uh, Buddhist poet. Love the artwork on this. Got this one used off of thrift books. Again favorite poem collection ever. I did start it in December so I spent a whole month reading this from December 2021 to January 11th 2022. Let's go to any random page. Let's do this one. Nothing lasts. And I wrote, not even love? Nothing lasts. How bitterly the thought attends each loss. Nothing lasts. A promise also of consolation. Grief and hope. The skipping ropes to ends. Twin daughters of impatience. One wears a dress of wool, the other cotton. I love this book so much. 
I said, gorgeous meditations on life, on small, simple things. That was my next door neighbor dropping something. By the way, the walls are very, very thin in my apartment. The poems are very much still lives of their own, much like the cover art. An overall beautiful collection I could have kept reading forever. I adored this book. Five stars. Then we read The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating. The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating, which I told you in my favorite books of 2022 was a birthday gift. I was wrong. I lied to you. It was a Christmas gift. It was a Christmas gift. The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating. Four stars. Finished January 14th. It was a gift. And what did I write? Uzumaki ruined snails for me. <laughs> So I did feel a little grossed out reading this, but it was also interesting. So yeah, that was basically the vibe. So if you didn't see my 2022 favorites, this is a story. It's a nonfiction book about a woman with a chronic illness that has her bedridden for a long period of time. And in that time where she's basically not moving and not able to do anything with her, with her body, um, she just kind of takes care of a snail so the her her caretaker brings in a snail from the garden puts it in a terrarium and she just looks at it and observes it and it's just a bunch of snail facts all right what did we underline here in the beginning let's have a look something is wrong with my body nothing feels right time becomes strange i get lost the streets go in too many directions. The days drift past in confusion. I think this is an incredible look at what it is like to live with chronic illness. And it reflected a lot of what I experience even with mental illness and what the days can look like and kind of feel like when you're going through that as well. A few weeks later, resting on the couch, I spiral into a deep darkness falling farther and farther away until I am impossibly distant. And I wrote, the best description of illness I have read and of fainting and what that's like. I've been there, everything distant, everything heavy. So I really enjoyed this book. Next in January, so that's book three. We've gone to book cuatro. Holy the Fern, my first Annie Diller. Is it my first or am I lying to you? I'm lying to you. My first Annie Dillard was A Riding Life and that was one of my favorite books of 2021. So my second Annie Dillard and I learned about Holy the Fern through in and of Lindsay from Instagram. So I don't have Instagram anymore but like if you do go follow Lindsay link in the doobly doo. Also, did I just say the wrong title like this entire time? Holy the Firm with an M. My friend Jay read this book and they kept saying Fern. And now I can't get it out of my head. Firm. Holy the Firm. So this is Meditations on Religion, God, and Life. I'm not going to lie, it was a little heady. I mean, it's, it's a tiny book, but it felt like a textbook. Like, it was really difficult to fully grasp. I definitely need to read this like 10 more times, but I did enjoy it. So on a first read, it got a three star. I said, moths consumed by flames, melting faces, falling planes, heady and hard to keep up with, but enjoyable. Lots of tabs, lots and lots and lots of tabs. Yes, I also have paint on my nail. All right, here we go. Every day is a God. Each day is a God and holiness holds forth in time. And I said, what a first line. What a good first line. The day is real already. I can feel it click, hear it clicking under my knees. I call it simplicity. The way matter is smooth and alone. And then I wrote, this reminded me of the Truman Show, like a set is being made, and action. Right, one more quote, one more quote. What did I write here? Here we go. How many of you, I asked the people in my class, 
which of you want to give your lives and be writers? I was trembling from coffee, or cigarettes, or the closeness of faces all around me. And then I wrote, there is never a time where I am not writing, when I am not thinking about writing, as if possessed. Holy the firm. It did ignite a bit of an obsession with moths, as did Mary Oliver. I have a couple moths on my water bottle. I just pre-ordered a moth graphic novel. Um, I just, yeah, they're really cool little beans. Did you know they like don't eat like the luna moth? Like they're so pretty and then they like can't eat and so they die. It's so sad. Okay, next, fifth book of 2022 also a January book. I was on a roll. I was on a roll. Dream Work by Mary Oliver. My first Mary Oliver. I read so much Mary Oliver this year and I have no complaints and I am in love with Mary. I, if I can marry Mary Oliver right now, I would. Thank you. I do. Yes, please take me with you. What did I say? I wrote my first Oliver Heart nature, interconnectedness, simplicity, crows, milkweed, and sunlight. Look at those tabs, look at those tabs, look at those tabs, There's so many tabs. That's how you know, that's how you know a book was delicious. I even stamped it, I don't know if you can see that, my friend got me a library stamp and I only stamp the really, really good ones, the ones I'm going to keep for the rest of eternity. So we have dogfish and I drew a dogfish and then I bracketed this entire stanza. It reads, I wanted the past to go away. I wanted to leave it like another country. I wanted my life to close and open like a hinge, like a wing, like the part of the song where it falls down over the rocks. An explosion, a discovery. I wanted to hurry into the work of my life. I wanted to know. Like, that's me. I'm like, tell me. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, I want to get to the crescendo. I wrote a crescendo and awakening. The airport run and the big kiss, right? And the rom-coms. I want to know whoever I was, I was. And then I wrote up here... I am beginning to understand through all these lives I read that all we ever want to do is know ourselves, our real selves, the seed at the bottom of those roots. Ah, it's just so inspiring. It was so beautiful, so inspiring, and it just opened up an entire world of poetry for me, and it reignited this love and adoration for poetry. So thank you, Mary Oliver, for being a soothing balm to my aching soul. Four stars, but you know, Mary Oliver is a 10 star all around. And the last book of January, you're gonna hear a lot of airplanes. It's the holidays. I just went on Christmas break. Today was my last day at work. I don't go back till January 9th. And you know, all those people are like flying to see their families or they're going on vacation to like Colorado and things like that. I unfortunately spent all my money on fountain pens and books. So I will not be going on vacation, but it's okay because you have me here on YouTube. <laughs> one day anyways a last book well january was so good january was such a good reading month journal of a solitude this was also in my favorites video three out of the six books i read in january made it to my top books of the year january was a good reading month journal of a solitude my first may Sarton was the house by the sea i believe this was my favorite book of oh my goodness 2020 I bought it from the Orchard Street was it no it's I bought it for the Orchard Street Reading Society but it was CW Pencil Enterprise it was like a stationery shop in New York that also had a book club but like I live in Florida so I couldn't attend but I still wanted to like support them um so I got it from them so it has that little stamp but I think the stationery shop closed I think it's closed it's so sad 
Anywho, do I have any of the cool pencils from there? I have one that I can show you. This is one of the pencils from their shop. It's a karandash and it's double vented. This writes so buttery smooth, this end. It's the CW Pencil Enterprise. A little relic from that time. I don't know if this was 2020 or 2021, but my friend Jay introduced me to May, and then this was, I think, a book club pick for us. We did have a book club. It was called the Hellfire Club. It pittered out, and that's okay. My dream, y'all, my dream, okay, is to one day be super uber duper successful on YouTube and then open up like a Patreon and then have a tier where it's a book club tier and then we could read books together because I love reading books but more than that I love sharing books. Things are better when shared. It's that fangirl, that excitement. Ah, I just love it so much but you know, obey the steps. So I read The House by the Sea. This was one of my favorite books a couple years ago. Majestic. This is a journal of a solitude. It's a different time in May's life. And it was the best thing I've ever read. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? A journal on the pleasures and magic that exist in the solitary. It was a gift. It was the gift from the same friend who gifted me this, from the same friend who gifted me this. So my friend Vilma got me all of these three books and another one for Christmas and I read all of them in January and I loved all of them. So I mean iconic friend behavior if you ask me. So I didn't tab this. The reason is because I pretty much wrote and underlined something in every single page and so I would just have hundreds of tabs so I only tab books if it's like every other page but if it's every page I don't bother I don't bother <laughs> oh so good and I also I was keeping a running list of like authors and books and people mentioned in the front and then I just kind of gave up but May mentions a lot of writers and a lot of artists and my start date there was January 3rd. Let's go, just let's flip to a random page. And I'm sure there's, there'll be something underlined on that page. So here it is, February 9th. It is rather like living in a vast cosmic mood swing. <laughs> and then I wrote, my life right now, my life every day. A huge cosmic mood swing. How devastating a voice can be. A sense of drowning, of being literally engulfed. I love this book so much. Let's do one more line. I am a little sad now because for the moment, poetry is not here. She talks about her writing and her job and her house and her pets and her garden and loneliness and it is just spectacular. If you haven't gotten into reading people's journals, I highly recommend that you do. You are very welcome. All right, and that will be the end of January. Let us move on to February. All right, so when I started the year, I had a very big dreams. I said, yes, this is the year I will read 100 books and that totals to about two books a week maybe eight books a month i started with six and i'm like that's a great start i totally got this and then we made it to february and this was you know the average this is victoria's average this is the amount of books victoria can realistically read and enjoy uh in a month and so the New Year's resolution got thrown away. Book buying ban? Who is she? I bought so many books. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to see it's going to be like two books. And then two books. <laughs> and then two books. Oh my god. For months. But it's okay. It's alright. You will also realize that I love poetry. It's like my favorite genre. So we're going to see a lot of poetry. So... I read two poetry collections in February. We read The Madness Vaz, a right before Valentine's Day, which I think was great because there's a few love poems in here. And then Oceanic, which was honestly a little bit disappointing. But this I discovered through 
Andrew Gibby. I came across Andrew Gibby on Instagram and then I came across their newsletter. I subscribed to their newsletter. So Andrew has cancer and is a poet and is genderqueer and gay and I love them and I love reading their newsletter and I'm always gaining a lot from them and when I was on Instagram I liked seeing their I think they had reels where they would read their poetry out you can look up um Andrea Gibson on YouTube and they have a lot of spoken word poetry and it just sounds so good so it's like spoken word poetry but madness vibes let's see what I wrote five stars February 11th and 12th, 2022, format paperback, Zodiac Leo. I did start putting the author's Zodiac signs in my reading journal. May Sarton was a Taurus because I thought it was really cool and interesting to compare their astrological sign with like the way that they write and express themselves. I wrote beauty, laughter, introspection, and falling in love the madness vase. So let's flip to a page. Let's see that first tab. Once I found a butterfly's wing on the sidewalk. I wanted to keep it, but I didn't. Oh my gosh, that dog, that dog barks at this exact same time every single day. <sighs> We'll just accept it as a part of our video now and continue. Um, I wanted to keep it, but I didn't. I knew there were things I should never find beautiful, like death and girls. At 11, I discovered beer. At 14, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. At 19, I nailed my palm to Amanda Bucker's vagina, actually drooled on her breast, and said yes so loud God couldn't disagree. These poems are so yummy. I love them. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I have another Andrew Gibby on the shelf just waiting to be to be read. It's called You Better Be Lightning. Okay, then after this we read Oceanic by Amy Nezukumatathil. Nezukumatathil. I'm not saying that correctly. Three stars. February 18th, paperback. An okay collection just didn't click for me. So poetry collections are like that for me. They're generally three stars. It's really difficult to find a collection that just blows my mind, that gets that five stars. It has, all of these things have to come together. The right experiences up until this point in my life, the right mood, the right weather, like everything has to be in perfect synchronicity for a poetry collection to just penetrate itself into like my DNA. Um, otherwise, it's just like, okay, that was, that was good, you know, but not particularly memorable. So, Oceanic. Let's go to the first tab. What did I write? I remember th this about being about, like, motherhood and about being a wife. And also about the ocean. Even he has crawled too far across soil to turn back now. And truth be told, so have I. I am like a man who prefers the taste of his own tongue instead of the lips of summer. My shadow and the shadow of sunflowers are the same. A love song to the earth and its inhabitants. It was nice. It was pretty. I recommend them both anyways because at the end of the day you never know what kind of poetry you're gonna vibe with. Okay so that was February. Let's move on to March. So in March I read two books. I read a poetry collection by Mary Oliver called Thirst that I finished on the 22nd and my first favos, baby's first favos, body work. The Radical Power of Personal Narrative by Melissa Fabos, and I finished that one on the 23rd. They were absolutely stunning, beautiful works of art, and they also matched! They're like the same colors. 
So when I read this collection, I said, okay, this is my favorite Mary Oliver. This is the one. All of the poetry here is on grief. It's about dealing with loss. And that is just my jam. I love, I love poetry. I also love books about grief. So I wrote spring, hope, grief, and love. There was always, there was also a sense of spirituality and like coming back to a God, a higher being, some other purpose for this life. So many tabs and it got stamped. It got the stamp of approval. That's how you know. That's how you know. All right, here's the first one. Here's the first one. Are my boots old? Is my coat torn? Am I no longer young and still not half perfect? Let me keep my mind on what matters, which is my work, which is mostly standing still and learning to be astonished. And then I wrote on my little transparent sticky note, I read this and it just brings me so much joy. Also, sunflower synchronicity. Yeah. All right, let's pick one here. Let's try this one. I am trying to find the lesson for tomorrow. I believe this was after Molly Malone Cook um, passed away. And then I also use sticky notes a lot to quote things that the poems or the phrases remind me of. In this case, it was Euphoria, Rue. But I think what they're actually saying is that you gotta give it a reason. You gotta give all this a reason because I don't want to be. I don't want to hold on to this forever. So it reminded me of the grief that Rue was facing when I was reading these poems. I spoke her name a hundred times. I knelt in the dark and said some holy words. And then I wrote here on the side. And we try to hold on to routine, the things in life where we are needed. But the space is always there, the loss. And so we pray and yell into the dark and hope that you listen. Oh, please tell me you listen because the holy words are all I've got. And finite loss is too big a cross to bear. <sighs> yes, this book. Yes, this book. Yes, this book. Thirst by Mary Oliver. Just uh, chills all over. I love this book. Then I read my first Melissa Fabo. So I read Melissa Fabo's Out of Order. So from the most recent release, which I think this came out, was it this year? Let's have a look. Where's the year? Not 1988. When was the publication date? I'm gonna say 2022, and we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> we're just gonna go with that. Okay. So, Body Work by Melissa Fables, I discussed this with my friend Jay, and I read every other consecutive fables with Jay, so Girlhood and Abandon Me, and we are going to read Whip Smart in January, which was her first book. So, Melissa Fables incredible essayist professor i want her to be my professor so bad like the idea of going back to school is actually troubling to me i don't even know why i got a master's degree that like really forked up my like mental well-being and stability but like i guess i get a little bit more money now um but if i like i would literally force myself back into debt if I get to have Favos like as my professor. So this book specifically was about writing and I love books about writing. Yes. <laughs> Writers on writing. Yes. Give it to me. I gave this book, I think it was four stars because I knew that I knew that it can be more. I knew that it can be, be deeper. And I wanted to save the five star for another book. And it's fine because the girlhood got it. So I'm happy that I gave this the four stars that I gave it. I wrote, first fables and already in love. So this also introduced me to Eileen Miles. Eileen Miles also has a book coming out in 2023. So let's go to a random tab here and see what good juicy things we find. 
What I have also observed is that avoiding a secret subject can be its own kind of bondage. We are already monsters, and to deny the monstrous is to deny its beauty, its meaning, its necessary devastation. We are telling the stories that no one else can tell, and we are giving this proof of our survival to each other. Tell me about your hands, the things they have done and held and hit, and let go. And then I wrote, all of art tells us, me, I was here too, alive, just like you. I love it. And that was my, my Fez quote. I often write about the things I can't speak, and one of the most common reasons that I can't speak of them is because it would have upset people. And so each chapter is like on a subject of writing, um, writing about other people, writing sex scenes, writing about anything, right? Navel gazing. It's okay to navel gaze. And then interspersed are like excerpts as examples from like other writers, which is how I found Eileen Miles. I haven't read your, her yet, but Eileen is on my shelf. I'm obsessed with Melissa Fables. I'm honestly a little bit in love with her too. I think I just, if I love an author, I'm like actually like in love with them. <laughs> like I want them to be my best friends. No, but that would be too scary and intimidating. Okay, yes. And a majestic reading month. Two books, but incredible books in March. All right, then let's see what else there is in store for us. So that was March. Then we have April, another poetry collection. And in this case, a comic book, a graphic novel. So on April 1st, I finished Emily Berry's brand new poetry collection published this year unexhausted time. Now my first introduction to Emily Berry was Stranger Baby. I learned about Emily Berry through Jen Campbell here on YouTube. This is about losing a mother. I myself grew up without a mother and so these hit really 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 hard. It's about motherhood and loss and the ocean and they are stunning. So once I fell in love with this and like bought copies from literally everyone I've ever met in my entire life. I read Dear Boy by Emily Berry and I did not like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it but I still held out hope and in comes an exhausted time. I lost my marbles. People were like tagging me like did you know they have a new book and I was like oh my god no freaking way. They look so cute together. Let me tell you, did I adore the first half of this book? Yes. Did it get really, really weird and then I like lost the plot? Also, yes. As you can see here, did I even say it? Oh yeah, 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 here we go. Stunning. Up until the turtle poop. And that sound that you hear in the background, that is my computer giving it its all. It is charging right now and it is also serving as a viewfinder for me so I'm so getting used to this whole YouTube thing and I hope that one day it is absolutely cinematic and spectacular and of tip-top quality but right now this is all I've got is my laptop humming in the background. I hope you forgive me. <laughs> So let's go through some of these. I gave it three stars. Let's go through some of the tabs here. To write a poem, you must fall in love. I did it many times, beneath the trees through which I walked in tears in wet school uniform. I did not even know what I wanted. So many things at once, incompatible. It would need to be someone who could hear what you had to say. It would need to be someone who could bear it. Let me see if I can find the page with the turtle poop. Because it's very weird. Oh, here we go. 
Um, once I watched a woman in a fish tank shitting directly into a tortoise's mouth. It was meant to be some kind of spectacle. She was invited to do it and was very happy to. And the tortoise was happy to eat. See that? That? I was like, what the flipping? What is that? What am I reading? But then B explained to me that it could have been like a dream sequence, like a real life mixed in with like her dream and how sometimes things in dreams so make sense. And like that, okay, that I can get behind, but come on. Pooping into a poor turtle's mouth, come on. So three stars. <laughs> and then I love that my, that my book pairings like match that's so interesting i had not noticed that before but it seems that we went with a bit of a color scheme so this color the color scheme for april i guess is like purple so i read how to deal i found grace Maselli on instagram as well i used to come across a lot of cool authors on instagram every time i mention instagram i miss instagram <laughs> Uh, and it was so cute and so fun. It reminded me of like the magazines I used to read as a kid. And like those, it's not Amelia Bedelia. I think it was like Amelia, Amelia's Journal or something like that, which is like a children's book. It reminded me of being a child and of the books I used to read and pick up as a child. And it bought my inner child so much joy and comfort to read this. And I loved her so much that I picked up a, co a couple of her prints and I had them up on my wall for a little while. Um, they've recently been, been exchanged with Mary Oliver and Virginia Woolf, but what if there's actually nothing wrong with me and it's okay to feel lonely sometimes. I love that. I love it. It's like really deep things with like, sort of like ordinary things like eggs and sugar and baby shampoo let's go to our tabs here this is a phone i should go outside outside today do i have to bring my umbrella celebrity heights comparing myself to everyone i have ever met grocery list how cute am i memories that are happy and sad my real friends are the podcast who did I get too overwhelmed to text back now? Ah, relatable. Also, this, like, questions to ask myself in the middle of the night when I can't sleep. Literally, my freaking brain just not being a nice person. Are you mad at me? Exactly when, how, and where will I die? Why am I me and not you? Are vampires real? What are the limits of my dog's consciousness? <laughs> I just feel like I'm holding on to a rapidly ascending hot air balloon, but in a totally safe way when I'm excited. I'm a very prickly cactus that has set itself on fire when I am angry. This is reminding me of my... Uh, my journal, my reclaimed journal about how feelings feel. I just love this so much. It was so cute. And if Grace comes out with anything else, I mean, and same with Emily Berry. It's, it's, it's going on my shelves. So definitely give Emily Berry a try. I would go with this one first, uh, unless you think that you are ready for the turtle poop. <laughs> and check out Grace on, on Insta so you can see their artwork and stuff before you pick up the book so cute I love it it was it was cute so many pretty colors okay so in May we read our next favors and what do you know another poetry collection Felicity by Mary Oliver this one and this one both made it to my top books of the year Alright, so I purchased both of these books physically from our local indie bookshop, Books and Books. That's why this one was autographed. I have here the receipt. When did I buy this? Does it say? I bought this November 27th, 2021. So I had it for a year before I read Fabos. 
it. It has her signature. So I actually didn't touch this copy. I think I was like too scared to mar it because it's, you know, autographed. So I actually purchased the digital book and then I just read it on my Kindle app on my computer. So I have all of my notes on my Kindle app. Um, but I adored this book. This really went in deep. Body work is very surface level. It's like here is a book about writing that I hope inspires you and changes the way you view writing, which it absolutely did. But girlhood is like here is my entire life. Here are all of my feelings and all of my emotions and this is me working through everything and you're just gonna have to deal with that. And I loved that. I loved girlhood. Girlhood made me realize so many things about myself that I just hadn't realized before. It led to a lot of breakthroughs and growth in my personal life. So I'm forever indebted to Melissa Fables. Also a buddy read with my friends. So here we go. Where are you? Fables, May 15th, 2022. Format ebook and hardback. A buddy read Oh, four stars. That's so interesting. Definitely would give it five stars looking back at it now. Essays on childhood and the patriarchy and addiction. It felt like fables working through shit, but through the filter of a class lecture. And so I learned about science and Greek myth alongside her personal histories. And most surprisingly, myself. I feel like the Victoria who started this book is not the same as the one who finished it. And then one of the quotes that I quoted in the favorites video was, it is a particularly crushing disappointment to realize again that your problem is yourself. It is a collection of essays. I just, just go read them. Just go read them. Do it. Okay, and then Felicity by Mary Oliver. These are so light. Thirst was so heavy. It was really tackling like the most primal parts of life. And this is just so like hopeful. And it's the last one that she wrote. So it's like after all this grief, after all this hard, you know, things that she went through. And we have like this light at the end of the tunnel. And I just, oof. It was absolutely beautiful. So Felicity by Mary Oliver, five stars. I wrote her last poetry collection, so light and hopeful, like a child finding wonder in every little thing, a bird or a puddle about the beauty and magic of love and getting to love. What a privilege to stop speaking answers and just surrender so i don't know if i tagged this book it doesn't look like i did but you know if i don't have a book it's because every page is underlined <laughs> let's just go to a random page i think i read you this one so let's go to another one maybe that i haven't read you yet without spring who knows what would happen a lot of nothing i suppose that's from late spring. That little beast, that pretty little beast of poem has a mind of its own. Sometimes I want it to crave apples, but it wants red meat. Sometimes I want to walk peacefully on the shore, and it wants to take off all its clothes and dive in. Poetry really does its own thing, and you just kind of have to go with it. I did think, let's go about this slowly. This is important. This should take some really deep thought. We should take small, thoughtful steps. But, bless us, we didn't. Now, tell me, where did it happen? In my heart? What is your heart doing now? Remembering. Remembering. Wow, this just, mm, there's just something about this. It's just, it just, I just feel it all over, like, in my eyes and in my heart and in my arms, like a hug. It just feels good to read these poems. Best books of the year. All right, so January and May really came to the rescue. 
And overall, I really ha had it up until this point read any like terrible books. Because a lot of times if I don't like a book, I just don't finish it. And it doesn't make it to the list. And that's fine. Alright, so in June, I read a little bit more, which makes sense because I wasn't working in June because we have summer vacation. One, two, three, four, five. Five books in June. June 11th, I read Blue Horses and I wrote... Mary Oliver consistently reminds me of what life is about that we are all of us human sharing a similar experience, that there is beauty and magic in the world, that love and maybe God are even real somehow, that we are all, even the stones, connected. I felt really connected to Mary Oliver. I love that I got to like finish the month off with her and then start off the next month with her blue horses was so beautiful and I feel like I can just say that about every single Mary Oliver. I mean it got the stamp of approval. <laughs> well, that's how you know. That's how you know. Here I'll read you little crazy love song. I don't want eventual. I want soon. It's 5 a.m. It's noon. It's dusk falling to dark. I listen to music. I eat up a few wild poems while time creeps along as though it's got all day. This is what I have, the dull hangover of waiting, the blush of my heart on the damp grass, the flower-faced moon, a gull broods on the shore where a moment ago there were two. Softly my right hand fondles my left hand as though it were you. Oh my god, oh, this makes me want to cry. Blue Horses was impeccable. I gave it four stars, but again, as I have said, just 10 out of 10 for Mary Oliver. <laughs> then I read Sarah Manguso. This got two stars. So this is the most recent one that they published, I think this year, 2022. Very Cold People. I have not read it yet. I, I like started it got seven pages in and then just put it back. That's a very Victoria thing to do. Just taste a bunch of books and then just put them back and never read them again. But this is a work of fiction. I haven't read this yet. This is the one that I read this year. I have not read this one yet. 300 Arguments. I read Two Kinds of Decay. This was great. It was about her dealing with a very intense illness and going like to and from hospital all the time. And then I had also read this one, Ongoingness, The End of a Diary, which were like excerpts from her journals when she became a mother. So I read this. This was a recommendation from Brittany from Common, Common Books. And I was like, okay, I need to own any every Manguso now. Like, that's how I function. I read one good book and I'm like, I need the entire everything that has ever existed from this author right now so i got this read it loved it got this read it liked it got this didn't read it got this didn't read it decided okay let's just let's just read another manguso this year i can do this this is a eulogy to her dead friend and i didn't like it i did not enjoy it what did i say my least favorite of the mangusos i've read it was a eulogy meant to be touching, but I found myself not caring. Describing a dead man's genitals was uncalled for, and the various suicide descriptions really upset me. I still have 300 arguments and very cold people on the TBR. We'll see how it goes. So I still have high hopes that, like, it'll redeem itself, but this made me be like, oh no, oh no. This person that I was like, this is going to be a new favorite author is like letting me down. What are some things that I underline? Let's have a look here. So I printed out a picture of Florence and it says, you need to go to, to war to find material to sing. And it was from the underline I am no longer moved to write poetry, but I traded poetry for a longer life. I used to believe that death would come when I was ready to walk through the last door, when I was done with suffering. I just opened the door and walked through it. I still believe it. 
But now I believe that someone or something else will open the door. The door. All right, so that was Sarah Manguso. Two stars, you know, could have been better. Abandon Me by Melissa Favos, which I gave three stars. So we're going down. We went four stars, four stars, three stars. I didn't like this one as much. It was still incredible. I mean, look at all those tabs. I still had so much fun reading this with my friend, Buddy Reed. Started it May 31st, finished it June 23rd. It took me a whole month, so my friend read it like really fast, and then I read it like really slow. The thing with this is that it wasn't as cohesive. So because I started with her newer stuff, I know that Melissa Fables can be very organized and to the point and get across what she means. But as I'm reading it to like her earlier and earlier ones, it's really like going with her thought patterns and it'll take like 200 pages on like this rampage about like her father or something like that and then it'll take you back to what she was talking about 200 pages before which may work for some people but like it lost me a little bit regardless it was still very deep and very personal this book specifically specifically this one is about a an abusive relationship with another woman that she was fully completely enamored and in love with um but it was like she would like be super rude and like gaslight the crap out of her and then like apologize and bring her gifts and she'd forgive her and it was like this back and forth this back and forth and this like never winning and she, while she was writing this book she was still with that person and then by the end of this book she like left her like literally like in her real life um, so I think that this book needed to happen for her to be able to like break free from what she was going through and I loved the honesty like the brutal honesty and the thing also is it's like she's not even painting her in a bad light like at least not in the beginning she was really really in love with her and some of the scenes are like really hot and like spicy and, and it's just so freaking heartbreaking um, to someone that you love so much to just have to let them go because they're like freaking assholes you know. Here I underlined, it felt like she was building me. To be rebuilt, we must first be demolished. And by the end of that first month, I was already undone. I already believed that some things were given and not sought. To understand that a burning thing could heal if you were willing to take it in your hands. Damn. I love Melissa Fables. Alright, and what I said about it was, a well-written book which I wanted to abandon. Fables describes it perfectly on page 290. She says, it's about too many things, it's not enough of any one thing, and that's exactly what this book was. So it'd often be several essays before we jumped back to where we started. You can tell healing happened in these pages, letting go of someone and reconnecting with others, but it was heavy and put me in a slump. Right book, wrong time. Which is totally fair. Then we went into a poetry collection. So this was my third, Ada Limon, Sharks in the River. I started with Bright Dead Things, and then I read the carrying and then this year sharks and the rivers so i gave it three stars i said my third ada limon always a joy meditations on existence love fear and sharks hopes of not being forgotten let's look through the tabs on this one If madness has come to make me a believer, then make believe me out. But why would I want to be so dead set, so hell bent on the actual? Why must you exist? Then we read Sugar Town by Hazel 
Mew Levent. I've never read any Hazel before. This was just really sweet and short and cute. I liked the art a lot. It's about this girl who like goes, I don't even remember where she goes. Utah? I don't know. Basically she's traveling, she goes to a bar, meets a pretty girl, they kind of date and the woman is polyamorous and then they decide that anytime she like comes to visit that town she could be like her girlfriend that lives like in that town. Uh, and it was cute. It was just really cute. I just needed something sweet and happy and this was sweet and cute and happy. This was so wholesome and I never read books with polyamorous people and that was cool and it made me all kinds of giddy and hopeful. Oh and this is the other Adelie Mom but I haven't read this one yet. This is on the TBR. Okay, my loves, and then that takes us to July. I read Witches of Brooklyn, What the Living Do, Sarah Kane's Plays, Department of Speculation, Diana's Tree, and Bolded. Let's start with Witches of Brooklyn. This is a middle grade graphic novel. It is a part of a series. It's this young girl, basically her parents, I believe they're like in an accident, and she is left to be taken care of by her aunties? Was it her aunties or her grandmamas? Aunties. Who are queer and in a relationship and completely in love with each other and also witches okay and Lil Effie is also a witch I give it four stars they live in the coolest house ever and then Effie like solves a mystery of her favorite pop star and helps them with magic and it is so cute okay this is their house this is their, look this is the ground floor look at the tile Tell me you do not want a kitchen with that tile. Yes. Second floor. Third floor. Yes. Third floor. You have three floors. These aunties live in my dream house. It is my dream house. I had so much fun reading this book. And it also smells really good. There's just some like comic books. I'm like, can you smell it? <laughs> That smell like an elementary school art class and it just is so comforting to me. So I wrote so incredibly sweet and wholesome a young girl loses her parents and goes to live with her witch aunties and she has magic ah I loved it also their house is now my dream house a whole library, witchy basement, Persian rugs, and talking nights. A fun and magical ride. I had a lot of fun with this. Then I read What the Living Do by Mary Howie. I had a Mary Howie on my shelf for a very, very long time. Like, on my wish list. I think there's also one called Magdalene. And I came in with the highest of hopes. The highest of hopes. I believe, yeah, it's an elegy. This is like for her brother. I hated this book. I gave it two stars because I finished it. But like, did I get anything from it? No. It's not that it's a bad book. It just didn't vibe. And you know, Poetry does that. We had Buying the Baby, where I highlighted Sin of a Mission, which was the price of what you hadn't done but thought. So this, okay, this poem was in body work. So I like bit the bullet and finally bought this off of my wish list because Melissa Favos wrote about it in her book and it was such a good poem and I was like oh my god I need this but then like the entire book was like not this poem. <laughs> I want to write a love poem for the girls I kissed in seventh grade. A song for what we did on the floor in the basement of somebody's parents house. A hymn for what we didn't say but thought that feels good or I like that where we learned how to open each other's mouths. For three days, I've now been trying to think of another word for gratitude. 
because my brother could have died and didn't, because for a week we stood in the intensive care unit trying not to imagine how it would be then afterwards. So a lot, majority of the poem is of this. It's like about her brother. Like, I loved this poem. It's like one poem was like a five star, but the book was a two star. I'm so sad. Then I read Sarah Kane's plays. So last year, one of my favorite books of last year was 4.48 Psychosis. I read the entire thing. I watched a couple of productions on YouTube. It doesn't have really like any stage direction or anything, so it's really up to interpretation. And it is absolutely heart-wrenching. Like, she's really going through it. The author did um, commit suicide so it's very intense it's very 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 intense um, I can't think I cannot overcome my loneliness my fear my disgust I am fat I cannot write I cannot love my brother is dying my lover is dying I am killing them both I am charging towards my death I am terrified of medication I cannot make love I cannot fuck I cannot be alone I cannot be with others my hips are too big I dislike my genitals at 448 when depression desperation visits I shall hang myself to the sound of my lover's breath like it's like it's like a it, it's it's uh, I don't know, it's like a suicide note, like it's in really intense. She did die by hanging, like, it is so, 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 so intense. But I think it captures a moment of, like, when you're in the darkest pits of, like, mental illness. Like, these are thoughts that I have thought, you know? And I, it was extraordinarily breathtaking and poignant and really hard to read. But, so, I read this one of my favorite books of 2021 but then I decided to pick up the rest of her plays um the complete plays now this year I did not read all of them I read up to here which is okay because it's a lot Sarah Kane it's a lot so I read Blasted so I read that play and then I read Phaedra's Love so I read two plays and then I read Cleansed, so I read three plays, and then I got halfway through Crave, so that would have been my fourth play. But I read a total of three Sarah Kane plays. Sarah Kane does not come to play. These are not for the faint-hearted, and Sarah Kane is not for everybody. Like, you have been warned. You have been absolutely warned. So here we go. What did I say about it? Four stars. Sarah King was an Aquarius. I semi DNF'd because I didn't really DNF it because I did complete three plays. I just couldn't read every play. I think I'll leave those for another time. I read the first three plays. They were. Oh, they went there like eating people's eyes while they're still alive. It was intense. Straight up. I think it happened in Blasted. He was alive. He was just sitting there. They were fighting. He like grabs his eyeball and shoves it in his mouth and eats it. There is murder. There is assault. Like whatever you think can happen, throw that away. It's the other thing that's going to happen. Like gross. Like a mother like wanting to like, you know do horrendous things to her son like it's crazy and these are plays i'm like no like this was live like this was happening live um i don't even want to imagine what that looked like but they went there they are really gritty and kind of disgusting um but yeah sarah kane <laughs> four stars then i read department of speculation my first jenny awful I read Department of Speculation with Lily on Instagram, and we loved it. So Department of Speculation is about the end of a marriage. It's, well, well, in, not the end, because they, 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 they end up together. Um, but they're married, and her husband is having an affair uh, with someone else. What did I write? I gave it five stars. Got the full five. I read you what I what I wrote about it. A book about a marriage, of how everything is beautiful until it isn't, but then it is, but not the same. 
head weather and hallucinating a lobster, and there being so much space, so many stars, it's written in snippets that all fit together like a perfect puzzle. I became very invested and even angry. The book also made me laugh a lot. It reminded me of being a child, eager to use new words and learn how to wink. What do you do when your partner cheats on you? I can't say I had done the same. So she has a child and I love, I love and adore the conversations and the interactions that she has with her daughter. And there's also so much in here, so much about space. I loved it. Let's have a look at one of these tabs. To live in a city is to be forever flinching. The reason to have a home is to keep certain people in and everyone else out. I never liked to hear the doorbell ring. None of the people I liked ever turned up that way. So I really want to read Weather, I think that's the name, by Jenny Offal because this was a really, really good first experience with her. Five stars. Then in July, I also read my first Alessandra Pisarnik. A Taurus, Alessandra Pisarnik. So it's a very short form poetry. And it is both in Spanish and in English. And because Spanish is my first language, I was able to read them both. So I'll read them both to you here now. A Exposición Goya, which I think it's, yeah, it's about like Goya the painter. Un agujero en la noche, subitamente invadido por un ángel. A pinhole in the night invaded all at once by an angel. Alguna vez, alguna vez, tal vez me iré sin quedarme. Me iré como quien se va. One day, one day perhaps, I'll go without staying. I'll go like someone who leaves. So I only gave this one three stars because I read it in one sitting. So what I think I need to do with this is just like really spend time. I think the shorter the poem, the more time you have to spend with it because there's just so much to like dig up. So it wasn't particularly memorable, but I do have another Alessandra Bisarni on my shelf. I think it's called, no, that's not what it's called. Oh, um, it's called extracting the stone of madness this one here so this will be my next Alejandra Pizarro so then I read Volver by Eva Balcazar I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this the year before I read Bed My First one of my favorite books of 2021 also a recommendation from Lindsay from In End Of She's like, you're going to like this. And I bought it immediately and absolutely fell in love. This is more so about depression. They are both um, queer protagonists. And I believe the author is also queer. <laughs> so, yeah. And her, she's also a poet. But I've never been able to read her poets or like any of her other books because they're all in Catalan. And like, I don't understand Catalan. But Permafrost was incredible. And then I read Bolded. So Bolded is about a woman who like works on a ship, but she has like this girlfriend that she like hooks up with anytime she's in the port. And then she ends up like leaving her job on the ship to go like have a normal life with this woman and like build a home and have the kids. But then it's like, this is not what I want, right? So she kind of gets stuck in it, but it, she kind of feels miserable and unhappy and like shackled up in it. And eventually just kind of wants to leave. So let's go through. I mean, Eva Valdasar knows how to write. She knows how to write. I like couldn't control myself and I was like, I need the third installment because these were like written together, like one after the other after the other. These like three separate women with their own stories, like all queer, like living their life and they're meant to go together. Um, but we don't know when this is going to get translated. We don't have a date, but it exists in Spanish. And I could read it Spanish, but I it, it's just like I never read Spanish, so I'm like really, really bad and really, really slow at it. Um, it just takes me a long time. 
el día que iba a preñarme, cumplía 24 años y organicé una fiesta de cumpleaños que en realidad era una fiesta de fu fecundación encubierta. A secret fertility party. Um, anyways, volver. I gave it four stars. I said, a look at motherhood. How much can depend on love? How easily things can fall apart about staying, about escaping. Malachi eyes and cigarettes and black holes and yeast and fish and that smell babies have. Beginning, settling, leaving all life like an ocean. It left my heart aching a little. If anyone talks to me about happiness, I swear to God, I'll break their face. <laughs> the first person who had the idea of building a pyramid must have been insane. What about the guy who thought it made sense to stick someone in a rocket and shoot them at the stars? Samsa is crazier than the two of them put together. Samsa is her partner. The morning is a gloomy, hungover teenager still in bed at 11.30. Time doesn't live outside us. It comes into being as we do. I highly recommend Eva Lais Basad. Especially if you read Catalan. I am so jealous. She's a Virgo, by the way. Okay, and that brings us to August. So you'll see that my reading dwindled once again because August, well, August is when the kids go back to school and it's with, with me. A teacher also goes back to school. Um, so August was the Sealy Challenge where you read one poetry book every single day. Look how many poetry books I read every single day. I, I read an entire poetry book on the first. I read an entire poetry book on the second and then I gave up. I said I can't do this anymore. So I read War of the Foxes by Richard Sykin and Dream of the Divided Field by Yanji. So the first Richard Sykin I ever read was Crush. This is back when I was at first getting into poetry and I can't say that I understood all of it but I did love it. He had green eyes, so I wanted to sleep with him. Love always wakes the dragon and suddenly flames everywhere. So I picked up another Richard Sykin. I wish I would have read it slower. I don't think poetry is meant to be read all at once. I am vehemently against this. I think poetry should take months, like at least weeks, you know? It's something you have to sit with like it's like listening to an album all at once and then like never listening to it again like no you listen to the album until you get sick of it and you like can't hear the songs anymore you know I don't know I think just poetry deserves a different kind of attention um, so I definitely would like to read this one again just a lot slower this time and not like in an hour War of the Foxes by Richard Sykin there are no tabs because a lot of highlighting happened in this book because there were so many beautiful lines like something has happened in the paint tonight and it is worth keeping it's nothing like i thought it would be and closer to what i meant all night the trees stand silent in the dark not touching I gave it four stars. Richard Sykin is an Aquarius. Soup, paintings, birds, the square root of negative one is I, and we have killed the self. And a zero is nothing, so the moon is nothing. And let us not seek shelter in others and maybe believe in a god, just maybe. Is it your heart or your mind? That was my review of the book. Very poetic. I loved it. So that was Richard Sykin. And then we read Dream of the Divided Field. I learned about this book through my friend Addie. And I can't say I remembered a single thing. 
<laughs> I gave it three stars. Um, I said that it was about bodies, past and future selves, mutability about being trans, love, family, acceptance, or lack thereof. Let's see if I highlighted anything. I think I just kind of read this all in one go. Oh, we doggy-eared. We doggy-eared. A friend. With a handful of raspberries in my hand, a voice is asking me in my head why I don't include the bad things. I say it's because I don't want violence to be beautiful, that I am responsible to what I make beautiful. But does beauty have anything to do with violence? And what's made of it? Then in September, I read a whopping one book. Not only that, it was basically a picture book. Our World by Mary Oliver and Molly Malone Cook. So that person she spoke about in Thirst, that she was grieving, and then in Felicity when she says, like, I, I hold my own hand, like, and imagine that it's you. It's all about Molly. Um, all of her books are dedicated to M, to Molly, and it's just amazing. So I give it five stars. It's a book of Molly Malone Cook's photography alongside a few of Mary Oliver's writings. So I wrote photographs which transport you to a different time of fedoras and suspenders, Eleanor Roosevelt and Cadillacs, Edna St. Vincent Millay's bookshelf, and among it Mary Oliver's love and heart, Molly's tender journal entries, a lifetime of dreaming together. Beautiful. Let me see if I can find Edna St. Vincent's bookshelf because I'm like, oh my god, this is the bookshelf of a poet. And I just wanted to read the titles and I couldn't. Like, they're ineligible. It's right here. Inside the library and the home of Edna St. Vincent Millay. That's her bookshelf. That is Edna St. Vincent Millay's bookshelf. Amazing. Amazing. So, interspersed art writings by Mary Oliver. And some of them are so beautiful here. I did I did highlight people travel to keep from crying in place. We tell the story from our safe side, our blind side, and history packs it up, marches with it. This is the photograph from, um, which one is it? Devotions. This is the cover of Devotions. See? It's the same picture. Ah, uh, I love Mary Oliver. Look at them. Look at them. The babies. I love them. No books were finished in October. Instead, I finished them at the very, very beginning of November. So I read Safekeeping and House of Light. I also started Madness, Madness Rack and Honey and just kind of left it there on the shelf. Read quite a few essays. I would say at least 100 pages and then just, just left it, just abandoned it for the moment. <laughs> ah, happens a lot, happens a lot. And then at the end of the month, I finished. I want to die, but I want to eat the cookie. So this was also a recommendation. I don't remember their name now. and It's going to drive me insane. But Safekeeping by Abigail Thomas. It's kind of a snippet into her life or like, you know, like a bit of a memoir, but in very short chapters and in some of those it's like a conversation with her sister that kind of moves the plot along but mostly it's about her and like her different husbands that she had. I gave it four stars. Read it from October 18th to November 1st. 
I said, A life in vignettes moved along by conversations with his sister focused on motherhood and marriage. I always write my start and endings, if I remember. Alright. I was young. I didn't know what things could happen. I spend my time in the moment. Everything else was shoved ahead, like furniture I didn't need yet. The parentheses within which I lived most of my life. Then I wrote, love that metaphor, a life enclosed. No past, no future, at least not one you can see. Was she as happy as she was supposed to be? She kept worrying about this. She wanted to live happily ever after, but that was an awful responsibility. She didn't know that you weren't supposed to feel anything. You felt what you felt. I didn't love this like I thought that I would, but I enjoyed it enough for I want to read more Abigail Thomas. Next, I read House of Light. Another Mary Oliver, of course. That is our theme of 2022. We gave it four stars. I read it from October 18th to November 5th. My sixth Mary Oliver this year. And I wrote... How much fun I have had discovering Mary Oliver this year. Always a delight. I spent a month with House of Light. Poems before work. How each change of mood changed how I viewed each poem. Some days they were bought out. They bought out cynicism. Other days I was moved to tears. Nothing but pure love and adoration for Oliver. I cannot wait to come back to her again and again throughout this life of mine. There was a poem in here that almost made me cry and I wanted to read it to you. Still, what I want in my life is to be willing to be dazzled, to cast aside the weight of facts, and maybe even to float a little above this difficult world. I want to believe I am looking into the white fire of a great mystery. I want to believe that the imperfections are nothing, that the light is everything, that it is more than the sum of each flawed blossom rising and fading. And I do. Isn't that so powerful? Ugh. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. Tell me, what else should I have done? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Iconic. <laughs> and then I read, I want to die, but I want to eat the bookie, which I gave three stars, also an Aquarius by Xehi. So I love psychology. I have a bachelor's in psychology and it's like my pipe dream to like be a therapist but also like I love being a teacher so but it's just so cool. Like I'm a really nosy person which is why I read so many like journals and like memoirs and essays and letters and things like that. Um, So I love it getting to just read someone's therapy transcripts like I can do this all day I can sit here with people's like personal medical records and just like read all of them <laughs> uh, but because I could not relate so much to their personal experiences and it wasn't particularly like organized in a book form I didn't enjoy it as much I think the way Melissa Fables does it is really good, um, at least in her like girlhood and like body work. She will intermix personal experience with like mythology and literature and it all kind of does have a flow to it while also being personal. This was straight up just 
psychiatrist me, psychiatrist me, psychiatrist me, psychiatrist me. It was like just a conversation. And it wasn't like the, the all the time, like all the years that she went to therapy. It was like a little snippet. So we don't even get that much. Um, but basically what she struggled with was like feeling that people didn't like her. Um being jealous of like people at her job and then like wanting to leave her job and loving people so much and then like hating people and cutting them off all of a sudden like I can relate to thinking that maybe people don't like me but I don't know I just didn't relate super much exactly to what she was going through so I felt kind of disconnected just like an outsider looking in which is what this is we're just outsiders looking into this like personal snippet of the author's life I think it was an important book and really really vulnerable to share also the the cover is beautiful but I don't even think it's something that I would like want to read again like this book specifically however I do want to read more by Sehi because this has it like had so much potential that I just want to see what else like she's capable of. It also really, really, really made me want to eat the bookie. <laughs> well, I've only ever had the bookie one time. One time. Let's look at a tab here to get a sense of the book. Your self-esteem determines how you feel about the sincerity of others. The important thing here isn't whether you are being loved, it's how you will accept the love that comes your way. And we've made it to December. I must admit, I have started about four books this month. We started night. We started <laughs> um, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. We started Linda Gregg, but you know me, I don't finish books, so really, I only read one book in December, and I have an entire reading vlog dedicated to it. But in case you did not see it, Our Wives Under the Sea, three and a half stars, very moving and scary in the beginning, but one, I guessed the plot really early on, which kind of ruined it for me. Two, there is some kind of supernatural element towards the end of the book that ruined the book for me. Not only that, no explanation. So this could have been a five stars if it would have ended any other way than it did. But it didn't and it was highly disappointing. But anyways, it's about wives. One of them goes on a submarine expedition, the submarine gets stuck in the deep sea, what should have taken three weeks takes six months, chaos ensues because humans should not be trapped together underwater for that extended period of time. Uh, and then we have the aftermath of that and the, the wife who was under the sea experiencing all these bodily changes, um, kind of comparable to like a terminal illness. But the supernatural element and the lack of explanation was really, 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 really frustrating and honestly a little bit hilarious. Um, three and a half stars. That's it. That is every single book I finished in 2022. 33 books. Aren't you so proud of me? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one, my loves. Bye!